Hi me again. So uh, we finished the model and in this part we'll be doing the material surrendering and stuff like that. And I told also before that we'll be doing something in Photoshop. So let's go straight there. And uh, I don't know if I told that but I already edited the textures which I will be using. Now this gold one or brass one I will use for this part here, the different part. And then this red one I will use for the rest of the model. Now I will show you my workflow, uh, what I did with the textures and uh, then we will just do the materials renders and some small post-production in Photoshop. Now uh, I did really simple things in Photoshop and really if you watch the tutorials which we have uh, through this fair about Photoshop you will understand everything and even more uh, what I did here. So. Uh, I found this uh, texture. I like the color. I like the pattern there. Like it's old. Also, this one is like off the bubble. And so, so what I did, I cleared things. So if I turn on this layer here, you'll see how changed uh, the texture. Now, for this, I use just uh, the stamp tool and the healing brush. First the stamp tool and then on a few parts the healing brush and I created this. So everything disappeared. Now the same I did also here. You see? It's like a new texture. Clear and nice. And I kept the only things which I really wanted to have there. Now after that I need uh, or I needed to correct something. Now first was the levels. So I make it a bit darker. Then some color balance to that. Even it's like a very less to see but uh, before the color balance it was a bit red. I took the red out just a bit to get again this brass feeling or gold feeling effect. And after I just used the curves to make some highlights. So very easy. And again the same by the red one. First the levels, make it a bit darker. Then I put there a bit more red because this part should be red. And at the end the curves which cave to the texture a bit more feeling can place the highlights more up and the shadows got a bit down so uh, nicely done. Now the last part which I did were the scratches. So what I did I just took my brushes which I have here a lot of them and I found some scratches uh, like this. We can append this brush so I took this one and just placed uh, some nice and soft scratches to the to the texture because I really I don't I don't need the too much scratches but few why not it should be a battle suit a battle helmet so if I have a texture which indicates that the helmet was used why not also scratches so I placed here for scratches then I created a bump map uh, simply desaturating the image and playing a bit with the levels even that this is uh, the levels was uh, where applied just here to the <coughs> to the image and adjustments so not like a layer above and again the same I did here first I placed there some scratches then I created a bump map so this is basically what what I did uh, you can see that it was very easy and uh, I don't see any point to make uh, or record this one more time because it will just take time and I don't know I think everyone can understand I also place these files uh, or to the for downloading so you can watch you can see the layers and everything so I don't see there any problem okay so uh, let's go back to our model now select everything and hide unselected so we'll keep our scene just with the helmet let's press M and we will start creating the textures so we need just three textures now the front the main or the gold and red and then the eyes very simple so let's start I don't know here or here at the bottom and we will use our metro library and we will place here this metal chrome mate here here and here I will place glass mate Uh, I will rename this like Iron Man Red, then Iron Man Gold. I will use the gold word for that. And then Iron Man Eyes. <coughs> then I will create a simple standard texture 
to be used uh, by something other. Let's go by 200 or something there. But we will see what will be the best. Okay, let's go to the metal now. Right click and clear this, and we will clear also the bump map. The same I will do here. And by the glass, there is no. So, first, let's place our texture there. Let's go to bitmap, and this should be the right one. So, right. I will place this up just to see. Now, let's go to the bump map and place the same texture. So, a red bump. And let's see, we have to go to the minus with a bump, and I know I will go probably with just very small settings there. I really don't want that it will be big or so, but I will see how it will be looking. So as you can see here are the scratches or should be the scratches. Now I will track down a bit uh, the reflectivity here. Let's go by 80. And I will go here by 40. So it will be a bit made. Oh, maybe 45 should be good. Anyway. Okay, something similar I will do also here. I need the reflectivity there. I really want it there. So <coughs> it should be fine. So let's go here. Bitmap. And, and just choose the gold map. So open. Now the same with the bump map here. The same settings, I will use the same, why not? Cold bump. I will use the same, like minus 0 0.1. And I'll drag this a bit down. Okay, so we have these two textures. Now for the eyes. Uh, I will use here the transparency, or I will edit this transparency a bit. We'll change first the color to some light blue thing. This is too much aqua, I guess. A bit less. Okay, it's taking too much memory, I guess. Turn this off. Okay, I'll go with something like this. And now I will put down the transparency a bit to 45. Or maybe 30. Oh, 35. Anyway, probably. To be enough, if not, I will just change that. You can play also a bit with the glossiness there, but this should be fine how it is. Okay, so uh, this I will apply straight to the eyes. Of course, I can apply also these textures, so just drag them there. I will just turn this on. And the same here to see the map. So here should be this, and here should be the rest. <coughs> okay, uh, also the sphere here, I forgot almost. I place here some uh, plastic reflective made. I will just drag down the reflectivity a bit or down so it will be completely black. So let's choose also black texture. We don't need the bump, but we can keep it there. It will be a bit more interesting. Uh, okay, now we can turn this off and apply above uh, the modifiers UV map. And we can go with the planner or we can go. A spherical, I think, or showing about for the planner would be better, but we'll see how it will be looking by the render. So I will apply this everywhere to fit the textures, both of them, of course, not just the texture, but the, uh, also the bump map here at the back and also for the ears so UV map fit here probably we can apply the box to 
should be also looking a bit better with them than just planner. And here I think I will flip the side and also here because I would like to render it from this side like from front and this side but if I'm looking here I see that here we have already a problem with the texture here you can see that so for sure we need to change that so let's go with spherical warp and the rest we will see now this is more or less fine on the back it's creepy but on the sides and so it's fine we could use also uh, the box but here we have some fragments which are disturbing also we could use the tuning dragon a bit and so, so on but here I will use just this one probably we, we don't have even to flip anything yes we don't have to okay <laughs> so here's our model with textures and everything now we need for sure uh, HDR map so let's go to environment let's hit here done bitmap let's go all formats and HDR map drag it here click instance and try call environment <coughs> now we need also to make the eyes glowing now for this I will use a light so let's go here I will use a free light click yes here I'll try to place it somewhere here yeah of course it's behind but it doesn't matter for us too much so let's place it before the eyes well, first before this eye somewhere here and let's change the settings I will hit here template and I will use the 40 watt bulb I will use uniform diffuse and spherical emit this I will drag down to 10 which should be enough I will increase the color to be something like blue and also change the filter color here to again something blue on perspective view <coughs> I will try to drag it somewhere here Now it should be in the center and we will see how it will be looking. Now from the top view I will just copy this and click OK. Now the settings. Uh, I'm not sure first about the light right now but we can hit here the realistic mode <coughs> and we will see yeah it's glowing a lot. So probably we will use maybe 5 or maybe this is too much too so let's go just by you know, 0 0.5 yeah that looks a bit better for us yeah, yeah I love the realistic mode if it's doing something like this slowly glowing again and again that's cool okay uh, let's create a plane on which this will stand no. let's do here a plane from the left view Z to zoom 4 to see the bottom of it I will just place it somewhere here uh, it have to be bigger in this axis is probably too much like this but in this axis for sure uh, maybe this is extremely too much yeah this of course so I don't know maybe like this uh, anyway we can scale that of course now again to the left view convert this shape to poly convert it to poly and we'll make here a curtain so a wall behind now the render which I will do uh, is unusual for me I will say because uh, as you know I'm usually using two point lights but here I will use a bit different method for the render I'm sure it's 
It's a beta method. <coughs> okay, let's see. It's more or less standing on that. And let's apply a tribusman to this two times. Now let's select our head and move it somewhere here. Maybe we'll move it a bit back. Now we need two planes which will make a tent. I will use for this box because because change it to shade for a while and I will create here a box let's say with these dimensions and may yeah big like this the height is also fine okay the width the width is fine too I don't need the width to be large just a bit but this and maybe just a bit this one <coughs> so it will create something like this which I will rotate maybe using this by I don't know, this degree and create something like this we'll copy this shape and as I said I will make a tent okay I will rotate it a bit more because the tent was a bit small now I'll explain what I'm doing don't worry Okay, let's convert this to poly because now I see that I didn't drag this to the bottom, so I will do it just manually. No problem for me, not fast. Like this, we can also make the tent a bit bigger later. So uh, we have this bigger or not? Here will be two models. Okay, let's zoom on that. Yeah, it should be bigger. Okay, let's move this away and we'll keep it like it is there. So, a few adjustments here to my shape. So, I'll drag it. To make a tent like this. This should be now enough. And still, I will tell why I'm doing this. Just give me a second. Finishing with this. Okay. <coughs> now I will drag this texture which I created and apply here, here, and here. I'll select my lights. Now this is plane four. I will go here and I will exclude this plane from these lights. Plane 4, exclude. Exclude plane 4. Okay. Now, just for better manipulation, I will select my model and group it. Oops. Group 1. It heard just a strange sound from Windows, which I didn't like. Now, go to rendering, render setup, uh, make my resolution for the render, which should be something like this, and yeah, here it was. Show some frame, just to see. I will try to fit my model to the camera, or create a camera view. Maybe from the front view it will be better, because, because I would like to have it like straight, straight render, a straight render with two models. So we have here one head, another head, while the another head will be rotated like this. <coughs> so one more time, front view, just make something like this, zoom out, rotate, okay, I'm not straight what I'm doing. Hmm. 
Okay, uh, I don't know, s probably something like this. Come on. Yep. No, don't rotate, please. Uh, okay, but uh, it's anyway up to how the scene will we'll see. Or how, or how your render will look at the end. So this to the left, or this here to the right, and I will create a camera from this. And I kind of like this view. I want to present the helmet from the front and also from the side, or be the side. Anyway, we can change this a bit later. Now, the lightning here. To so go again to lights, free light. Create here a free light, turn on the shadows, you can go here. Uniform diffuse, rectangle. Make the rectangle, place it here, drag it up, and a bit rotate. Okay. Uh, bit colder <coughs> and this I don't know 150 okay now what I did I used the curtain behind and these boxes to be some objects which are uh, making cable the photons bouncing from each other from the model back to the model so the light now will be bouncing from Let's say the helmet here, here, and back. Understand? Usually I do two point lightning, which does more or less the same. I have a primary light, which is here, and a secondary light, which simulates the bounces from behind. But here, uh, I wanted to try this and really to use just one, one light, which we have basically. Uh, in the nature, which is the sun, and the environment is bouncing the light uh, to the objects, so you can see transparent shadows and stuff like that. So very simple. Mm. And I and I think for this model it will be better. So what now? Uh, let's go to rendering, exposure control, and let's hit the render preview. We'll see what we will get back. Okay, the eyes are glowing, pretty nice. And uh, I think also the exposure is fine, maybe I don't know one seventy five just to make it a bit more. If we are here, we can also uh zoom on this a bit, so one more time, run the preview <coughs> okay, a bit a bit more down right now. And let's go. So render setup. I will lock this and create a very small image, like 300 something. It should be enough. For, okay, this is too small for the testing. Uh, I don't need samples actually. I don't need the rays. I will just show you the bounces here. So I will hit render and I will wait. So, so the scene should now uh, be rendered pretty quickly. Uh, the eyes are glowing a bit too much, but it could be also caused by the samples of so. Anyway, I think I will place them a bit more before. Okay, now let's go with one bounce. I will hit here the region, and I will use this area to make some kind of comparison of that. So render it one more time. And when you see, when you look here, I will move this. It's not so dark that it was before. It's cause the bouncing there. It should be also to see here a bit, even that this image is a bit too small. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's to see here. The shadow a bit disappeared. As you can see here and so so it helps. So let's go with two bounces. 
it should be enough. More bounces means lots of more time. So uh, if you do three bounces, you can count with higher end of time. Again, the sand is lighter. So we use the bounces to simulate the real, uh, real, yeah, the real light by physics. Anyway, um, let's play a bit more with the eyes. It would be nice to fix them. Uh, so first, let's see. Here to exclude group and group. I will go here. I hope here too. Yeah, it's everywhere. Uh, let's go to perspective view. Is that to zoom on the? Uh, yeah, probably it. Probably I will drag them away a bit. Before the mask, <coughs> it's a bit too much. Let me just change that to lighting setup there. But uh, okay, I ran the frame window and I will use again the region. So hit that one more time, and now. I will use it just for the eyes. So area like this. Even that the eyes are not looking so bad right now. Yeah, now it's going a bit more here to the top, which is also good. And I think it's a bit better for me. I like the glowing eyes. Okay. Let's go to the top view and I will hide this for a while. Hide selection. I will first move this because it's in, not in the same position. Probably I will just delete that. Uh, I will go here a bit lower, like 004. This is fine, 10 centimeters is just enough. And now I will move it one more time. I don't want to use the self illumination effect by materials. No, I don't like it much. Okay, let's select this. Hmm. Select this in this view. Again, group that. See to the camera, and we'll make again a copy of this. Okay. I don't know how much I rotated that, but I think just like this. Yeah, one more time. Okay, now hide this, the new group which we created or copied right now. <coughs> now we'll select everything here, delete here, hide uh, or unhide all, Control A and hide unselected. It will again just hide our references. Now the eyes should look a bit better. Hmm, render frame window one more time, region. Render. Yeah, no, they are better. <coughs> okay, if you want, you can make them small, of course, but I like them like this, that they are illuminating also this here. <coughs> hmm. Okay, maybe zero, uh, just 0 0.3 will be enough. You don't want that they are like shining too much, but you'll see also this by the render. So I don't know. <coughs> maybe it will be enough, maybe not. We'll see. So we have the bouncing here. Uh we can go <laughs> yeah we can hit this here, the realistic. Just hit a four and we'll see how the light do, do, do. I like this effect very much. 
what it's doing there. Okay, but taking a lot of memory, so we don't have to do that. But we can change her. I can change the color to this. To this. Okay, we have that, that, and that. We can go try and set up. We can go by 350 FG points, two bounces, four to sixteen samples, and okay, well, uh, make the resolution a bit bigger. And just hit render. Oops. Yeah, we can now see the eyes. But I would like to see the world model, so I will hit here just view and one more time. I will hit render. Now you can lay back and wait. Uh because this will take some time. Now we can talk about something or just <coughs> sit and look. Now, uh, we will also see right now how the textures fit to the model. And also, uh, don't forget, we will be op applying also uh, ambient occlusion map, so we will make some parts darker, something more uh, lighter and stuff like that. So don't worry about anything so far. We will still edit something. Okay, so far the texture is applied well. I don't see there anything. We we'll also wait for the bump map. Now I think uh, here on the left side we'll see it the most if it's okay or not. Yeah, I placed the bump I think too low. Um, yeah, the eye is great. Okay, now uh, I see that the bump is too small there. Okay, in both models, of course, or both textures. So, turn this off. Let's go here. First, here uh, we have the bump 0 point minus 0 0.1. Let's go by 0 0.5. It's a bit more to see. And the same will apply here. And I think I will just try the render here. Because here's a bump map. Oh, on this stripe. And there we'll see very, very fast if everything's fine. So let's go to the region. And let's make a stripe here. Uh, what we want to render. Okay, render. Can go also higher with the settings there, but uh, I don't see there any reason to do that. Okay, again, the rendering will take some time, even by this small amount. Yeah, now I can see the scratch here. Still, I think we could go a little better. Now here it's fine. We're strange that here I don't see that. Okay, let's look from the other side on that by using this bump map. If yeah, there is a bump, as you can see. So it should be seeable. Hmm. Okay, I will change this to shrink warp. Now this looks good. Probably also this one will, but I didn't like uh, it there. So I will apply here this one. Here I will apply the same. Here it is. I mean here. Let's 
we'll keep, yeah, here too. I will keep just this part. Okay, the same I will do here. So change the map or the UV map settings a bit. And render frame you know one more time and we will do the same. <coughs> now uh, as you can see while it's going from the top down the reflections are changing. Uh, they are changing from reflections to some kind of flat reflections or non-reflections. It's because we are reflecting just white background. That's all. The environment, which are in the HDR map, is reflected, but you can see that. It's because it's applied uh, in the background and this is just hiding or hide it by uh, the planes or so. Okay, I like that. I don't like still this one. So I think I will change this again for to see it a bit better. Hmm. Okay, I don't like that. So the planner was better here, much better. Let's try the box. Maybe the box actually should fit here. And this looks good so far. So one more time. So again, a test render. Now the test render, test renders are always a bit like uh, when it will be done. But uh, let's be honest, uh, you have to do that. Uh, you cannot tell to yourself like, okay, this will be okay, and you will just render that. Maybe it will, maybe not. I will guess the note. Even that you use some settings, what you know. Yeah, this looks the best. Okay. Okay, everything now should be fine. Let's just look here. Just for sure, just for sure, I will apply it one more time. They are a bit lower than uh, these ones here, but anyway. Okay, I think now we can do a full render. Just make this back. And I will also stop the recording while that. Because it will take some time and I just don't want to tell you again some things and stuff like that, you know. So I will stop it for I don't know, a few minutes and I will come back after the render will be done. So see you in a minute. Okay, so I'm back and the render is finished. And what I did and what I didn't tell you is that I increased the light about one point. So it was uh, 0.3 and I created here 0.4 for the light before the eyes. So okay, uh, we have here uh, the final render. Now let's copy it and place this in Photoshop. So let's create a new file, OK, and just Ctrl V. So we have here the model, the render. Now click X. Press M and we are going to do an ambient occlusion map. So let's choose here mental ray to surface place ambient occlusion. For the distance, just zero. Sample 64. Uh, render setup, uh, processing, enable. Drag this one here. Keep instance. And in exposure control, let's set up this. Let's place this a bit down. Okay, it's too much. Maybe just two should be enough. Yeah, this is fine. Okay, so uh, we have here the ambient occlusion map and fitted the exposure control. A bit, maybe it should be no. This should be fine, and let's just hit render here. Yes, this should be fine. So.
So uh, the ambient inclusion map will give us some more control about the highlights and the shadows. So what should be more lighter will be a bit more lighter. What should be more darker will be all also uh, more darker. So it's quite uh, good improvements for our model. And of course, it will take some time to render uh, with our higher settings there. As you can see, also the lights are now disabled. So it's quiet very quickly and fine. <coughs> uh, maybe we could do this a bit more lighter, the map, but uh, also we can do this in Photoshop. So I don't see there any problem if it's lighter or darker. It give us uh, now some control about the highlights so we can control a bit more there you could see also some wor workflow chart here how I usually go with that so uh, as was written there I will do the render then the ambient occlusion map and if I really want I will do a clay render with wires and apply also this in Photoshop and merge everything together now the uh, clay render with the wires of the mesh structure will make the model more interesting but I will do it right now so I will apply it above the layer here I will hit here multiply and we can I think keep the 100% but you can also control it a bit more as you can see but I will keep it like this now I will place above one more layer and make here these black stripes which are uh, usually fancy and nice. Okay, so place it here and I think I will also show you the clay render what I mean exactly. So turn this off, to turn also this off. Now I will need to select just my models here without the camera and the lights even that I think the lights I could keep now again per sam uh, we can copy this we just rename this mm. can go a bit uh, lighter map and change this to composite <coughs> keep the old and for the first material here I will uh, give you again a standard diffuse to the black and just apply it to my selection. So again camera and exposure control. Now the exposure control should be the same like by the model before. So it should be 1.75 I think. So we go up. Yeah I think we can, uh, we had the settings here. And this I will render uh, before We'll hit here the is a line. Is a line also here. Also here and that should be all. Okay. So I render one more time. Again, this will take some time because uh, the light is already scattering there and <laughs> it takes some time to uh, for the render to complete but if we go back to Photoshop you can see that the model or the render is already looking very nice. Now the only thing which we want to achieve now is make it a bit more nicer or a bit more realistic or a bit more interesting for the people when they uh, watch this. And also here you can see the bolt. Now the bolt is not exactly a circle. I was telling this uh, to you before. Uh, it's because we applied tubeless mode uh, with value 2. If we would apply with uh, the value with thing, ah, 3, it will be already a circle. <laughs> Not now, but then yes. It's, uh, it's because uh, to make a circle or a sphere from a box takes a lot, a lot of smoothing. So you have to count with that. You will have there some areas which uh, we will be able to transfer. It will be much easier. But 
for that we will have to cut into the shape which we don't want. Okay, slow, slowly rendering. Uh, <coughs> the color render is uh, also looking quite nice. It is because the lightning which is there. Usually, if you if you do a color render or the VIP render, uh, you need it fast. So you just place the the materials, then on the skylight, and you are done. No bounces, anything. But here, if the light or when the light is all about the already placed there, we can use uh, already the light sense there, so like that. <laughs> but uh, as I told before, you don't have to do this anymore. You can watch this or listen to me if you want, but uh, you don't have to do this. If you already placed Aranda, you just have to wait. It also depends on your hardware how fast will be the render done. As you can see, uh, the last frame, which was the ambient occlusion, took two minutes. This will be probably uh, very similar, or maybe higher time. But we have here more than 200 faces. I mean, 200, 200,000 faces. So it's plenty enough. Okay. So copy image, I always hitting it a few times because I don't know it never works the first time. Place it above and now we'll place it overlay. Now it's overexposure, but here we need really just I don't know maybe ten percent to already to see uh the wires on that. Maybe just five will be enough to see to see the, the lines, but you don't have to place it above, or you can place it just uh, the one on none of this. It's up to you. So uh, okay, I'm done, and I hope you liked the tutorial and everything about that, and also the style of lighting which I used here etc so everything at the end so again thanks for watching i will see you by some next interesting tutorial keep in mind uh be a fan and kid model so so far bye bye